So we, we devise this triangular hoodus, as we call it. But uh, just imagine it's four feet, of, four feet across here. And there's a, a tapered hole that's just like a set of cave and slip. Okay? And there's a three and a half inch opening here so the tubing can go in or the rods can go in or whatever. And uh, we put rollers on this little fella. And it just rolls up and down on a set of tracks. And that's kind of an idea of what, what it might look like. And by the way, these are all cut out sections. Uh, anyway, there's the, the rollers. There's the track. Of course, that's the derrick. Uh, there's the inserts. And of course, the inserts operate pneumatically. So you can just lift them out, lift them in, and it allows the tubing or rods to go inside this hole. There's your, there's your uh, tongs down here and your well head and your so on and so forth. Okay. There's a little robotic arm up there that uh, picks up on the sucker rods and it just literally picks it up and then stacks them over there to X, Y, uh, Z coordinate type thing. Uh, by the way, high school kids do all this stuff all the time. They just love this robotics and XYZs and all that stuff, but it's, it's really not a complicated task at all. But as the, as the rods are being unscrewed uh, and held up, uh, held vertically by the, by the arm, the uh, hooters or the traveling block where you want a table or whatever can start its trip back down, so it becomes a, a multifunction task at the same time. There's what the tubing board will look like. They're just sitting off to the side over here, and the robotic, a separate robotic arm, a lower one, just takes the tubing and then racks it where it's supposed to be. And of course, if you're going in the hole, it does exactly the same thing. And there's your tongs and everything down here. And I had an aha moment. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and the aha moment was, you know, how do you, how do you really automate this thing? And, and, and uh, just think about an elevator. The elevator is very simple. You know, you press a button, and the door's open, and you step in, and you press a bu button, and the elevator takes you to the level that you want to go to, and the door is stopped. And it never, it always stops where, you know, right where it's supposed to, or else you're going to trip, right? And then the doors open, and you step off, and the elevator, it just does it every day. I mean, it just, it's a very uh, predictable thing. So, oversimplification. Uh, here's my derrick, and my little hootus is going up and down, and I've got this linear encoder position thing that's measuring exactly where the hooters is or where the tubing is or where the rods or whatever it is so it knows just pulling in a 50 foot or two twenty five foot rod or 30 or 28 foot joint of tubing it's sitting there looking at it and you put a positioning coupler right here a positioning center I mean a, a coupling center it, think of it in terms of a collar locator on a perforating gun or a hall effect sensor or a proximity gauge or whatever you want to use but it's, sense, it's sitting there sensing it says, hey, I see a coupling. And I'm going to pull that tubing up three feet or four foot, and I'm going to stop, just like the elevator does. Okay? And then the logic, the program control logic in the, in the system, uh, once it stopped and it's got the coupling located, the coupling said, I know what the next thing to do is I'm going to extend the tongs. So it extends the tongs and said, I know the next thing to do is turn it clockwise. And then... I know what the next step is. I'm going to reach out there and grab with that robotic arm and put it into rack number three, position two. Okay. All, all planned out. So it's all, uh, hopefully, the dream is, is that you can sit back in your little van and this rig is going to pull tubing and rods. That's, that's the idea. And uh, some more attributes of it. Uh, there's the hooters, there's the tubing, and the derrick, of course. And if you'll notice that dead area, of the, uh, this is, by the way, is four foot uh, square, and of course it's four foot across here, but there's a dead area in there that's you know, six or seven feet high that you can actually have your blowout preventer and your tongs, your tubing tongs, rod tongs, uh, excuse me, stripping heads, 
stored in there in racks. So when, when you rig up, if you're going to be pulling tubing, I mean, excuse me, a rod, then the, the operator of the thing is just presses the rod button, it slides at a tray, and you can pick it up and just lower it right exactly where you want it. Okay? This it goes into play. Same thing with the blowout preventer. Okay? So when you're uh, ready to change these things out, uh, you don't have a trailer backing up and people picking them up with winch lines. And remember the, the accident, 109 people got killed by getting caught between objects? And that's usually blowout preventers, power swivels, and, and uh, well heads, and stupid stuff, you know. And hopefully this will eliminate that. This is a kind of a, a vertical view of the derrick. Uh, here's your four legs, there's your fifth leg, and then there's your hooters or your table that goes up and down. There's the robotic arm that uh, picks the uh, rods apart, and then the, uh, I mean, uh, sets the rods in there. There's the tubing. Uh, the, one of the problems we have, or, or had, past tense, is that you know, latching those elevators. Well, we don't use elevators. Uh, we have a, for tubing, we have a little uh, plunger that goes down inside the tube, inflates the bladder, picks up on the tubing. So there's nothing external to grab. Okay? This is for, for racking only. It's not for pulling out of the well. And uh, that becomes your Y axis for your uh, robotics. And of course, your uh, X and Z axis are up here. So it just literally reaches down inside the tubing, expands, picks the tubing up, goes over to the next Y or X, Z location. Either I'm, I've got you guys baffled or I'm, I'm looking at a lot of big old starry eyes like Fred, you have lost it big time. But anyway, <laughs> and then uh, <coughs> the other thing is, this is, this is the, uh, the five-legged derrick again. There's the hooters and there's the wellhead. Uh, it, it's hydraulic. There's no hoist. There's no wire. Uh, there's no operator on the floor. But anyway, it, we're, we're planning on using a uh, hydraulic cylinder, much like your pumping unit thing or a forklift, whichever way you want to look at it. It's a, uh, it's, just a, it's a regenerative type system. And what that means is if, if you have a big old plunger here, Let's say you're using a seven inch cylinder. Then you take the power squared and times the, the, times the uh, hydraulic pressure, and that gives you how much force you is pull, pushing up on this. But it also tells you that's a lot of volume of fluid. Okay? So when the, block, when the, when the hooter, so the table is going back up at a, it empty, you don't need all that pressure, and then you certainly don't want all that volume. So you allow pressure to be bled from the top back to the bottom. And all you're doing is displacing the uh, cross-sectional area of the rod itself. So you can triple your speed of the, of the piston with the same amount of, uh, uh, with, without uh, increasing all the horsepower and the, the fluid, because you're talking about a lot of large fluid volume. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, 